All right, guys, uh, in this video, I want to talk about a pretty simple concept, but something I think that is worth discussing if you were trying to trade uh, inner circle traders or Michael Huddleston stuff. And that is a topic called chart lipstick. So what is chart lipstick? It's basically your drawings um, and, the, and the balance between having enough drawings on your chart that you have a working idea of, of what the market is doing visually, uh, where but not too many drawings. So you want the right amount of lipstick on the chart, but not too much. So, you know, you want that kind of like juicy plum kind of red lipstick where it's accentuating the lips, but not like, you know, plastic surgery looking lips, right? Basically. So on your chart at all times, let's go up to an hourly chart or even a 30 minute, you should have at least one buy side liquidity and one sell side liquidity. Okay, guys, if you don't, if you can't find any inefficiencies, if you're having a hard time identifying any gaps or whatever, these are your minimum two drawings. Like you need these on your chart. Okay, because the market is going to draw to liquidity at all times. It's, it's going to draw to liquidity. So have a buy side liquidity on a 30 minute or an hourly chart, all, always on your chart. Okay, like because you know the market will end up at some point going and taking those out. All right. So sell side liquidity. Now I have two sell side liquidities marked out right now. That's okay. At least always have one. So there's kind of the minimum lipstick. Let's get down to our 30 minute chart. Now right now the market doesn't really have a whole lot of inefficiencies other than that new day opening gap for me to even worry about. But let's say that we were earlier in the market. 30 minute chart you might want to have one or two inefficiencies drawn out from like a 30 minute time frame. So for example, we're working here. Okay, we'll just take the undelivered portion of that and we'll just write. So the lipstick that I will use is Sibby, 30 minute. Okay, so I'm marking out what time frame I saw this on. And my recommendation with 30 minute and hourly inefficiencies is don't overdo it. Have like one or two. Okay, like one or two. Don't, don't clutter your chart too much. Guys, the market can only go up or down. So, you know, it's... Honestly, the bare minimum you just need is the liquidity because you know it's going to liquidity. So at the end of the day, right, you don't, that's kind of like the bare minimum is to have high and low. Uh, but we can do a little bit better than the bare minimum. So I will keep like a 30 minute inefficiency on my chart and I'll mark it out as 30, 30 minutes. Let's talk about like your smaller time frame. So five minutes up to 10 minutes and below. So typically what I will do with these is I'll either do like BPR five minute or Bissy five minute or usually I won't even mark out order blocks. I might mark out a breaker block. Uh, there's so many order blocks you could, why would you draw a rectangle on all of them? But you can. So, all right. The thing about the fair value gaps is that you don't really know before price gets there. Okay, is price gonna use this as immediate support and go higher? Are we going to trade through it, trade down, and, and do that? So, you know, the the fair value gaps can be tricky. But basically, on my five-minute chart up to like my 10-minute chart, or even a one-minute chart during the day session, I might have one or two inefficiencies actually on a box. And then what I'll do, let's say that they're kind of used up, or you know, you, you you've used them a few times. I will just I will just remove that drawing. It doesn't mean that they're gone away or I'm ignoring them or whatever. It's just I'm going to remove the drawing, guys. So basically, the amount of lipstick that you want to have on the chart. You always want to have buy side and sell side liquidity on like an hourly time frame, at least a buy side and at least a sell side. That's kind of a minimum. Inefficiencies. Mark out if you have like a new week opening gap, leave that on the chart or a new day opening gap, leave that on the chart because that's going to be a big factor for the like for the whole week or for the whole day the new day opening gap like that's going to stay on my chart for the whole day Thursday because price is going to reference that probably all day right so I'm leaving the new day opening gap on there um, in terms of your active lipstick like the things that you're using as your entry mechanism kind of one or two and then you got to delete you have to delete them or, or your chart will get too crowded so you know rejection blocks for example, the highest close, I don't even need to mark that out. Like, why would I mark out a rejection block? I know what it looks like. It looks like this, and it looks like this, and it looks like this. And, you know, it's no point in marking out a rejection block. 
order block, I might mark out like OBMT. So like, you know, order block right here, mark that out 50%, then take a trend line and go OBMT. I don't, I don't really need to do that with order blocks. I mean, guys, order blocks are pretty simple. Like, you really don't need to mark most of them out. Breaker blocks, on the other hand, so let's say we have high, low, high. Well, which part of that do you want to be the breaker? So here's the thing, right? If I take this whole thing as a, as a bearish breaker, high, low, high. Number one, it could just be inverting right now and just go higher, but that's a big box, right? That's a very big box. So which part of it do I really want to be the breaker, the high, low, high? Probably just that part and just call that the breaker, high, low, high. Okay, we'll just call that the bearish breaker, five minutes. Now, in reality, I know that this whole thing is the breaker, or even this high, low, high, right? That whole thing could be the breaker. But I'm, I'm choosing to isolate it to kind of like a small area of price because I don't want a huge box on my chart. So, again, guys, minimum amount of, of lipstick on the chart should be a buy side liquidity and a sell side liquidity. New day opening gaps you want on the chart. New week opening gaps you definitely want to leave on the chart. In terms of your active inefficiencies that you're using to enter price, could be breaker block, balance price range, or Bissy and Sibby. I would not, I would not overdo it on your small time frames. And remember to delete the lipstick once, once it's been used a few times. I'm not saying that they can't be used again. I'm just saying you don't want to have like so many boxes on your chart. It's like a cornucopia. Okay, so there's a balance here, like everything, where you have enough lipstick on the chart that that it, you know you're visually cued. Uh, you're trying to enter in only on a, a PD array that you can see and that you can identify. Uh, but at the same token, you don't want so many on the chart that it's too cluttered. All right, guys, so this has been my discussion on chart drawings or what I refer to as lipstick and striking a balance between uh, having enough but not having too much.